Hello and welcome. Today we are solving maximum sum obtained of any permutation from lead code biweekly contest 35. So we are given an array of integers nums and an array of requests where requests of i is start i comma end i. The ith request basically asks for the sum nums of start i up to nums of end i. And we have to return the maximum total sum of all requests among all permutation of nums. And we are required to print the answer modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So let's straight jump to an example test case. So in the third example, we have this nums array and the requests array. There are three requests 0 to 2, 1 to 3, and 1 to 1. This is one of the permutations of nums. For this, the answer for the first request will be 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is 6. For the second request will be 2 plus 3 plus 4, that is 9. And for the third request will be 2. Taking the sum to 17. But we want the answer across all permutation of nums. One such permutation is 4, 10, 5, 3, 2, 1. If you try computing the expression, you will get the answer as 47. So how do we approach this problem? So for a second, let's actually forget about the elements of nums and only think about requests. We have some requests in range start to end which can be overlapping for different requests it is evident from the visuals that the square that occurs in the most number of requests will have the highest weight because it will contribute its value to a lot of requests here the brightness of the square is proportional to the number of requests in which that square occurs so the brighter the square, the more requests it occurs in and the more it contributes to the sum. So it would make sense to put the highest value of nums in the brightest square, the second highest in the second brightest square and so on up to the smallest value in the darkest square. So how to implement this? We'll maintain a frequency array which will contain the number of times an index i contributes to the sum over all requests. And then for every request, we increment the value in the range start i to end of i by 1. Then we'll sort the nums array and the frequency array and take the sum of their product for each index. So that will ensure that smaller values are assigned to darker squares and higher values are assigned to brighter squares. But if you try incrementing the value in range start to end for every query, that will time out because if there are q queries and each is of the form 0 to n minus 1, then you will be incrementing the whole array for each query. So the time complexity will be O of Q into N, which will time out. So how can we speed up this update operation, range update operation? So this is the central concept of the problem. We need to do constant time range update per query. So let's define our problem statement a bit formally. We are given an array A of length N and Q queries and we wish to print the final array after the application of all queries. So in each query we are given two integers L and R and we need to increase every array element in the range both inclusive L and R by 1. So the naive way is actually incrementing the values for each query. But if we need to do better we need to think of something else. The idea is to do a somewhat of a lazy update. For updating the range L to R, we just increment A of L by 1 and decrement A of R plus 1 by 1 if it exists.
Then after all the queries are done, we take a prefix sum for the whole array. The reason why this works is, you can think of it like this. In the end, we are taking a prefix sum. And if we increment a of l by 1, then every element from l to the end of the array will be incremented by 1 at the end. But we only meant to increment up to r. So we decrement a of r plus 1 by 1. So that will mean all elements are decremented by 1 from r plus 1 to the end of the array when you take the prefix sum. And for multiple queries, it is just like some kind of superposition. Here's the code for doing the constant time range update per query. So as you can see from the code, the time complexity of this approach is we go of n plus q that is linear in the number of array elements and queries. So let's look at the code now. I'll explain the C++ code and the Python code is very similar. So in lines 8 through 12, we just build our frequency array. Here I took the frequency array of length 1 greater than the size of nums so that we don't have to do the checking of that condition whether the right index plus 1 is within the array. Then we sort both nums and our frequency array and we take the variable s to denote the sum and we take the sum of their products of corresponding indices of nums and frequency and then we finally return s. So the code is pretty self-explanatory. Now finally, let's look at an animated running example of our code in action. So here we have our arrays, nums, requests and frequency. We iterate through requests and build our frequency array and then finally we take the prefix sum of our frequency array. Then we sort both the arrays and compute the required sum. So that's it for this visual editorial. If you like the video, consider subscribing and see you next time.